Hey kids, I've got six pieces of candy. Does anyone want one? Me! Me. That means everyone gets two pieces, right? Well, that's the fair way. What if we're not full? Well, I'm gonna teach you now how many ways there are to hand out six pieces of candy to all three of you, even if it's not fair. Now, in order to be able to find how many ways there are to hand out six pieces of candy to the three of you, we have to establish some foundational material about counting first. For example, if I have R number of items, and I want to use N items from those R items, I would use the following formula for the number of arrangements, which are called permutations. Can you say permutations? Permutations. Good job. We would use R factorial over the quantity of R minus N factorial. Factorial stands for multiplication consecutive numbers down to one. For example, if I had four factorial, that would be four times three times two times one. It's just an easy way to notate. For example, what if I have seven unique pictures and I want to pick four of those pictures to put on a wall? There's an arrangement of four, but I have seven to pick from. Well, I would use this formula of seven factorial over seven minus four factorial. And I would get 840 ways to arrange four unique pictures on the wall. That's a lot of ways. Now, this is for identical or unique objects, but how would I solve for identical objects? For example, let's say I have five identical A's and three identical B's. How many ways would there be to arrange those? Well, one way would be to list them all. That's a very tedious way to solve. So instead, we could use a formula. Here's the formula. Notice we have eight objects. There's five A's, three B's. So you start off with eight factorial divided by five factorial and three factorial because there are five identical A's and three identical B's. Now, we are using this formula because in any of these arrangements, if you switch two A's or switch two B's, you would get the exact same arrangement. So that's why we are dividing by five factorial and three factorial. Now we are ready to find how many ways there are to split six pieces of candy amongst the three of you, and it doesn't have to be fair. In fact, I call this the not so fair way of counting because we're not necessarily evenly distributing the pieces of candy. So let's imagine that each of you have a box, and I am going to randomly put pieces of candy in the box. I could put two, 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 I could put everything in one box. There's many different ways. For example, let's say there are three in this box, one in that box, and two in the final box. So you get three, you get one, you get two. We will represent these candies with stones and the dividing lines as sticks. So this specific scenario is stone, 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 stick, stone, stick, stone, stone, as represented with the stones and sticks. Hence the name of this method is sticks and stones. So this is one method, or one way, or another way, we could put three in the first box, and three in the next box, and then none in the third box. Now, how would we represent this scenario with sticks and stones? Stone, 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 stick. Stone, 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 stick. Very good. It would be stone, 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 stick. Stone, 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 stick. Now, I want you to notice there are many different ways to do this. I showed you two such ways. But in both of these ways, and in every other way, there would always be six stones and two sticks for a total of eight objects that we want to permutate. Now remember when we permutated the A's and the B's? Well, we're going to do the same thing here. There are eight total ways divided by two factorial, six factorial, because there are two sticks and six stones. And we get an answer of 28 different ways to arrange these objects. Now so far, I've only given you problems that have the identical pieces of candy. But, what if there are not identical pieces? For example, what if there are six red pieces and five blue? So now, switching the red and the blue gives you a different arrangement, right? Hmm, it's a little more complicated. Well, let's go ahead and list out one possible scenario. We could have four red in this box, two in the last, 
we could have three blue in the middle and two blue in the last. Therefore, our scenario for red is four stones, stick, stick, two stones. For the blue, we have stick, three stones, stick, two stones. So we've got two different things happening here at the same time. Well, why don't we take them independently of each other? For the red, we've got a total of eight objects. Six stones, two sticks. And we would have 28 different permutations. For the blue, we have a total of seven objects, two sticks and five stones. Use the formula, we get 21 ways to arrange the blue. Using the multiplication principle of counting, we would then multiply those two numbers, 28 times 21, for a total of 588 ways to hand out six red and five blue pieces of candy. Do you understand? So if there are five lollipops, five Tootsie Rolls, and five Reese's, there are exactly 9,261 ways to distribute them to us. Is that right? Good job. The student has become the teacher. So who wants some candy? Me!